Hello, and welcome to the Beginner's Guide to Fish Keeping. I'm your host, Chris, with Multi Tank Addiction. In this episode, we'll be covering the importance of proper tank and stand selection. There's lots of choices out there, among others, uh, the type of stand you could get, either a purchased or a DIY type stand, as well as the aquariums. There are acrylic and glass, and some are plastic frame, some are metal frame, some are no frame or rimless. So there's lots of decisions to be made, and this is some important information. So let's get to it. When it's just you, well, times can be tough. With a little bit of research and planning, the aquarium hobby can be an exciting and rewarding experience. There are endless possibilities and many different biotopes that can be created and enjoyed by the whole family in the comfort of your home. Now, the first step to getting into the hobby is to develop a budget and work within that budget to decide where the aquarium is to be installed. The size, the style, the stand, a canopy, and where you're going to be purchasing the setup. All right, when planning a budget for the aquarium, considerations that need to be made include the cost of the initial setup, maintenance items, and energy consumption. The initial setup cost is going to be determined by the type and size of fish and plants that you are planning on keeping, as well as the cost to decorate the aquarium. There are many costs involved other than the initial setup. It is important to include maintenance such as food, light bulbs, filter media, medication, also, the monthly costs, which will be reflected in your electric bill, may be minor in a small system, but need to be considered when dealing with the more powerful pumps and lighting associated with a large aquarium. The aquarium should be situated in a place where it is out of the main traffic flow, but still in a place where it can be enjoyed and seen. Direct sunlight should be avoided because of the possibility of unsightly algae growth and the heat that would be added to the aquarium. Windows, doors, and heating and cooling vents are other variables that you need to avoid due to the possibility of temperature fluctuations within the aquarium. Now the weight of the aquarium has to be taken into consideration as well. A good rule of thumb is to estimate the total weight of the aquarium at about 10 pounds per gallon, so a 75 gallon aquarium would weigh approximately 750 pounds. To avoid sagging your floor system, it is ideal to place the aquarium against a wall, which is a weight-bearing wall, usually on an outside wall of your house. Now, if you're unsure about loading your floor system and the correct placement, it is wise to consult a contractor in your area. The last consideration to make concerning the location of the aquarium is its proximity to a water source and drain. Water changes are the most important aspect of maintenance. So the aquarium should be in a place where it is convenient to fill and drain. A second story location with no water supply would be a poor choice because the labor involved in carrying buckets up and down the stairs. Typically, the more hassle involved in the maintenance of the system, the less often it will be performed. Now the frequency of water changes is a large factor in the success of the system. So it is wise to limit the time needed by installing the aquarium in a proper location. The size of the aquarium is going to be determined by the budget that has been allotted for the system and the location where the aquarium is going to be placed. Now that you've determined both your budget and location of the aquarium, you can decide the size of the aquarium that you will install. It is true with aquariums that bigger is better. A large aquarium will give you a much broader range of species of fish and invertebrates that you can successfully keep. Not only will your options of livestock be greater, but the system will also be healthier for the inhabitants with a larger water volume. With more water volume, the system is less likely to go through sudden changes. These changes in water chemistry can occur due to overfeeding, unnoticed death, and temperature fluctuations in the room where the aquarium is placed. It is a common mistake when entering the hobby to be drawn in by a certain species of fish and not to make the decisions concerning the setup based on your budget and location requirements. The result with this common mistake is either buying an aquarium that is within your budget and is too small for the species or using the species to make your buying decisions and not be
being able to afford either the maintenance items or quality equipment in the beginning. Either case, the end result will be an unsuitable environment for the fish and will greatly reduce your chances for success. In other words, if you're planning to get into the fish keeping hobby, use your budget and location requirements to keep the right aquarium, not what species you have an interest in. There are basically two types of aquariums on the market today, glass and acrylic. Each type has advantages and disadvantages. Glass aquariums are less expensive in the small to medium sizes and are more readily available. Also, glass tends to be more resistant to heat and does not scratch as easily as acrylic. The downside to glass aquariums is that they are considerably heavier and have silicone seals in the corners that need replacement with time. There is a broader range of design possibilities with acrylic. Acrylic can be bent and molded into just about any shape imaginable and is considerably cheaper in the larger size aquariums. Besides the design possibilities, acrylic is clearer than glass and it can be repaired easier if it does get scratched. In both types of aquariums, there are specialty systems available. Some of these systems include the complete filtration either in the hood or the back of the aquarium. Other systems, like the reef ready aquariums, have the overflows for the filtration built into the back corners of the aquarium. When comparing the different aquariums, it is important not only to compare prices of the different units, but also the quality of craftsmanship and especially the warranty periods that are included in the system. Now we get to stands. The stand is an integral part of the aquarium system and there are a few considerations to make when choosing this component. The stand serves the basic function of holding the aquarium in place as well as concealing equipment and supplies below. There are two types of stands commonly available on the market, iron and wood. Iron stands are good and are going to be the least expensive and do not offer any cabinetry for concealing the equipment. Besides the lack of storage, these stands are typically not very sturdy and they tend to rust easily when exposed to salt water. Now, wood stands are available in a variety of styles and finishes, which makes it easy to find one that will match the furniture in your home or office. Now, when comparing different models, take some time to look at the craftsmanship and place the stand on a level surface and test for stability. A stable aquarium is very important, especially if there are children or pets in the house. Aquariums are very top heavy and pose a definite risk of injury to anyone around if they are knocked over. Now, try to avoid stands made primarily out of particle board. Particle board does not hold up well in a high moisture environment. And if allowed to get wet repeatedly, it will just end up falling apart. You can also design and make your own stand or have the aquarium built into the stand or into the wall. There are many different materials which, from which a stand can be built. Concrete blocks being the most common. I've seen some spectacular stands built out of decorative concrete blocks. There are many different colors and textures of concrete blocks available on the market, which can be incorporated into any interior design. The advantage to blocks is the strength and durability. For stability, it is best if the blocks are stacked on bond. This means the joints between the blocks are staggered every row. Remember though, blocks will add considerable weight to the system and this needs to be taken into account when determining the location of the aquarium. An aquarium built into a wall can be a spectacular display without the added furniture and obstacles in the home or office. Typically a wall with a closet behind it is needed in order to do, do this. Unless you have the carpentry experience it is wise to consult a contractor in designing this type of display. As in choosing an aquarium, it is important no matter what type of stand that you choose that it be structurally sound, be of good craftsmanship, and have a reasonably acceptable warranty with it as well. Okay, well I hope this information has been very useful to you. Um, I hope that I've helped you out in making your decisions a little bit easier when you go into that pet store the next time and decide that you do want to go ahead and grab a stand and, and get some fish. 
it is very important that you do make these decisions wisely and by a budget. Otherwise, you will get stuck in a situation such as myself. I have a channel called Multitank Addiction for a reason, guys. This hobby is very addictive, and if you don't set a budget for yourself, you can easily get into the thousands and thousands of dollars setting up a fish room with multiple tanks and not taking into consideration important things such as the power that is going to be used. So just remember to keep that into consideration. Do your research. Make sure that the, the fish are going to be the right ones for your tank. And just want to let you guys know that the next episode for next week is going to be on filtration. So make sure you tune in for that next Monday. And we will have a guest speaker talking to you about the importance of filtration, the different types of filtration, and what we can do with it. So just remember, guys and gals, we are feeding the addiction one tank at a time. My name is Chris again with Multitank Addiction, and I hope you have a wonderful day.